across the Atlantic Ocean, stowaways on a giant airborne fortress. Though time was short, we made sure to study up on our unknowing host, Arpeggio. While attending a prestigious boarding school, the young Arpeggio excelled in all subjects, but he never managed to keep up with the other boys physically. Sadly, his wings, due to their small size, were useless for flight. Furious at his feeble body, he focused his powerful mind to search for a cure in the works of the Italian Renaissance masters. Their notebooks provided the springboard for this sinister young genius, and it wasn't long before the Claw Gang took him on as chief inventor. His talents must have been at work repurposing all the clockwork parts for their criminal schemes, and now this mastermind is in possession of all the parts. It's only a matter of time before he puts them back together, and when that happens, well, I'm not gonna let that happen.
magnetic fields radiating from inside that blimp. If Arpeggio's already started reassembling clockwork, that's where you'll find it. Sounds good. I'm on my way. Don't waste any time here, Sly. Get to the blimp and take some recon photos. To build the plan, we need to know how close they are to reviving clockwork. Relax, Bentley. I've got it under control. Calm down, Bentley. He might be in one piece, but he doesn't appear to be, you know, alive. Let's stick to the format here. How about some recon photos? You're right. We need to be informed to create a plan of action. Try to get a shot of Clockwork's head, a mech egg, and one of those spinning magnetic inducers. They seem important to the procedure, but stay away from the guards. If you get detected, we won't have time for a second chance. These magnetic inducers seem to be holding the clockwork parts together. Radioactivity from inside those mech eggs. I wouldn't get too close. on the wall. Clearly, Neela and Arpeggio have conspired together to rebuild clockwork, and it looks like they're dangerously close to realizing their goal. Look, Bentley, I know it's not your style, but I need a quick plan of attack. Try to think of a way, any way, to stop clockwork from getting reassembled. Well, those magnetic inducers seem to be holding the parts together. If you reverse their polarity, it should pull clockwork apart. Unfortunately, the inducer speed control station is locked down tight. Pickpocket keys for the four patrolling guards to get at it. Then, you'll need to manually reverse the polarity of each inducer deck at the top of their rotation. Consider it done.
are spinning slower, get up there and reverse the polarity of each deck. Then the magnets have been reversed. But by Jove, it seems to have locked the clockwork parts into place. Excellent. <laughs> Sly Cooper, of course this would be your doing. Ah, Mr. Cooper, no doubt you believed a reversal would pull the old bird apart, eh? <laughs> but it seems to have had quite the opposite effect. I'm truly grateful. When fully powered up, I'll join myself to its circuits and be born anew! All this because you can't fly. You're pathetic. Immortality! Immortality is what I seek. The other Claw Gang members were much too short-sighted. They were satisfied using the clockwork parts to drive their various trivial schemes. But not me. No. I saw them for what they really were. The keys to life eternal. So what? You had Neela put me on the scent back in Cairo and then waited while I stole the parts from the other Claw Gang members, all the while not arousing any suspicion that you were behind it all? You make it sound easy, Cooper. I had to carry your pathetic gang through that first set of heists. I was overjoyed when Arpeggio let me toss you in jail. I could finally go after the parts myself. Ah, but acquiring all the parts was only half the equation. Think, Cooper. What kept Clockwork alive for thousands of years? He was fueled by his hatred for my family. Splendid! That's right! Hatred! Putting his gears and wires together was child's play, compared with accumulating that much hatred. You can't make people hate. Oh, my poor naive boy. My meticulous mind has found a way. As your hippopotamus friend will attest, spice consumption makes you both angry and susceptible to hypnosis. The Contessa, hypnotist extraordinaire, devised a way to command people through the use of flashing lights. I've created this blimp to be a massive transmitter of those precise light frequencies. The only problem I faced was finding a suitable source of light waves. The Northern Lights! You've been collecting Northern Light energy so you could hypnotize everyone beneath the blimp! Ah, hypnotize those who'd eaten food covered in illegal spice! Thank goodness for Dimitri! Through his nightclub, he got the whole city to consume the spice! You're going to Paris to unleash a hypnotic light show of hate? That's outlandishly cruel! Cruel, perhaps but necessary to give Clockwork his spark of immortality. Ah well, my new body awaits me. Be a dear, Nila, and keep him covered. Ta-ta!
stupid arpeggio. I double-crossed the Koopa gang, Interpol, and Carmelita. What made you think I wouldn't do the same to you? This is preposterous! You're my protege, not the next candidate for my immortality. I demand you exit the clockwork frame or... or... is born! As we all know, things are looking grim. Neela has joined herself to the clockwork frame and the Union has produced Clockla. She's out, and free to terrorize the world. This blimp is still in motion to Paris. I can only assume Arpeggio's autopilot will activate the Hate Hypnosis light show. If that happens, there will be no stopping Clockla. She'll be immortal. But we still have a chance. In her new form, she'll need to draw a lot of energy from this blimp's engines to stay strong. If we can disable the engines, that should be enough to weaken her to a state in which we can attack. Getting at these engines will require all three of us to work together in perfect harmony. We've pulled off some tough jobs in the past, but they were just a warm-up round for what we'll be going through tonight.